Have you ever been in a hopeless situation? I'm sure you have. But this was hopeless, hopeless. My guest had a son, seven years old, the worst kind of autism, can't read, can't write, can't spell. And all of a sudden, he starts communicating with the most profound thoughts coming from heaven. In fact, it then gets better. Then he begins prophesying and changing people's lives. My guest said, no one's in a hopeless situation. My guest says she knows how to grab hold of a supernatural rope of hope. <laughs> My guest, Tony, you're a pastor, one of, one of many pastors at a mega church. Your life is going good. You have a nice marriage. Uh, you have a beautiful baby boy. And then a bombshell hit you. What was it? Well, yeah, everything had been going wonderful. We had our little jo Joy, Josiah, and uh, we named him that because it meant fire of the Lord. Hmm. And we were excited to start our family. And, uh, you know, we bought our house. Uh, we wanted to have 2.3 kids with a dog and a picket fence, you know, the American dream. Yeah, you've been watching TV. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, but Josiah was hitting all of his medical milestones. Everything was going really well until about 22 months old. All of a sudden, very quickly, things began to shift. And over about a three three week period of time, Josiah. he stopped looking at us. Josiah. He stopped responding to his name. Josiah. Suddenly, play Josiah. skills that he had, mm -hmm. uh, he started Josiah. losing them. and. The 40 words or so that he had began to just go away. Words like mama and dada. He was flipping lights on and off incessantly. And so uh, we mobilized and we tried to figure out what was going on. After four months or so of testing, we finally found ourselves sitting in a boardroom with doctors around the table. And they just said, uh, autism it's autism spectrum, spectrum disorder. disorder. And I remember opening the folder and the words leapt out at me. No known cause, no known cure, lifelong. We were going into something that was a hopeless situation as far as that goes. And that's really what I struggled with. God, where is hope when there is no hope? And then it got worse. At age five, he got a lifetime sentence. Explain that. We mobilized, we had done everything we possibly could uh, in the natural, you know. We, we absolutely got him into the best therapies. We did all sorts of uh, alternative therapies with him. I even sat with him in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber for 14 dives, they're called. We did everything we really could. But then at five years old, we did get that addendum that we just hoped we would never get, that he was nonverbal, low functioning, and severe. And so, Sid, what that meant was that he would be one of 40% of children with autism that they say would never speak. How, how did you, as a mother, cope with this? Well, that's just it. You're really told to learn how to cope with it. And I really struggled with that coping thought. In fact, I, I asked God, how am I supposed to cope with this? I wrote down 10 questions for God because I said, you know, if I'm going into this, I need to know biblically what I'm supposed to do, how I'm supposed to pray, how I'm supposed to manage this life. Everything, just all your best resources burn up very quickly. Uh, emotionally, spiritually, mentally, financially, you just burn out very quickly. And when God says, I have good plans, for you. I have good plans for your son, plans for hope in a future. I had to be really serious and ask God, D is that for us? Do you mean that for me? I had to look at the affections of my heart and was autism the voice that I was hearing loudest or was what Jesus did for us what I was hearing loudest? And then at one of your lowest moments, you're not one that would have experiences with, with God where God would show up. That wasn't you. That wasn't your paradigm. But he showed up one day. <laughs> Tell me about it. I felt like for the first time in my life, I really needed to feel him and couldn't. 
And I felt like when I prayed, I was just praying into the darkness or something. Well, um, things had been really difficult with Josiah and I had put him down for a nap and I decided I better try to catch a wink because you don't, ca you don't get a lot of sleep when you're a parent of a child with autism. And uh, I go to lay down and all of a sudden, about 20 minutes later, I just wake up and I smell this most amazing smell. And I can't figure it out. I'm smelling my hair. I'm smelling the pillow. I'm <laughs> trying to sniff this out like a bloodhound. What is this smell? And it smelled like vanilla and cinnamon, like creme brulee almost. And I couldn't figure out where it could have been coming from. I go out, I go out into the hall, not there. I come back into the bedroom and I'm like, I'm just gonna lay down for a second. And I just drink it in. And I'm going, what is this? And I remembered my mom telling me about when my father had passed away. He died at 55. She was so low and that one day she smelled the fragrance and she told me it was the fragrance of the presence of the Lord. And I went and I looked it up on Google. I'm like vanilla, cinnamon, <laughs> fragrance of the Lord, you know. And here other people had experienced this, but Sid, what that did to me, it showed me that even though I couldn't feel him, that Jesus came and superseded that by getting to my senses to say, I'm here, I am here. And there was just this peace that overcame me because of it. And then you found something called rapid prompting method. Did you ever teach him to spell? No. He started spelling. How supernaturally he knew words. And get this, how supernaturally he knew amazing theological concepts that PhDs don't know. And it gets even better than that. He grabs his iPad and starts typing this. I mean, I've heard of, of miracles, but this is off the charts. <laughs> Did you ask him how he learned how to spell? Um, I had been teaching him this method called the rapid prompting method. I had watched a documentary, but I, I saw this documentary and I decided I have to go get that for my son and uh, figure out this, this particular method. So I had been doing this method for about a year. But one particular night, I'm sitting at the kitchen table and uh, we're doing a lesson from the children's Bible. And so I read him a short lesson and I decided to read about when Jesus healed the blind man. So I read the lesson and then I say, Josiah, Jesus Josiah, healed the blind Jesus man. What did Jesus do? Did he H-E-A-L heal the blind man or P-L-A-Y play with the blind man? You write that on a piece of paper, rip the paper in half, tap heal or tap play. Yep. He chooses heal appropriately. Right. I say, okay, let's spell heal. And I put up the iPad and there are letters in big alphabetical buttons. Right. And so I said, okay, let's spell heal. Josiah, can you spell heal? He touches G. I'm like, oh, he's missing it. Then he touches G -O. O. And I'm like, go? go? He goes on to spell his first independent sentence. God is a God good, is a good gift, gift giver. giver. Oh, that is good. That is good. What went on inside of you at that moment? What, what happened? I, I thought I was on candid camera or something, or I had cracked or I was being punked or something like that. But no, I was just like, what is happening right now? And I thought, I, I think he's being healed right now. Like after all these years of praying and all this stuff, I think he's being healed right now. I go back and I'm like, Josiah, yes, that's true. But Josiah, how do you, how know, you this? know this? And he types, God is, God is very, very capable. capable. <laughs> And Sid, what happened from there is all of a sudden... Whoa, 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 whoa. How does a kid like that spell? I had to learn. You had to learn. You had to learn. How did he learn? I, I asked him one day, how is this happening? How do you know how yeah. to do this? And he, he typed, Jesus taught me the order of sounds. My and goodness. I'm like, Jesus gave you hooked on phonics or something? <laughs> <laughs> But for the first time, we were getting to know our child. Things like your favorite toy, your favorite color. What do you like to do? But not only that, he started coming out with the most profound wisdom words. But here's what I don't understand. 
He knew things from science, from history, theological concepts that I venture most of you don't even understand. Give me an example of some of the things he taught you. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, the first time I was realizing that something was way beyond of what I could even imagine was I, I brought him home a, a, a rubber lizard. Josiah, and so I asked him, hey, what do you want to name the lizard? And he writes out a name that he wants to name it, Opie Hans or something okay. like that. And I was like, okay. And, and then he starts writing about how uh, lizards, lizards have, have ageless, ageless tails and they don't just have scales, they have aspiration have pores scales. and all this stuff. And they I'm like, how, how do you know, know this? How could and I know, know he's not being taught that because they're like, right. what's the red circle? You know, I mean, it was very, <laughs> he wasn't learning that from anywhere. You knew it was supernatural. I did, yeah. Okay, but give me an example of an advanced, like most, most of you, have difficulty explaining the triune nature of God. Some people call it Trinity. I like the triune nature of God. What did he say about that? Well, so Sid, Josiah started coming out with these wisdom words at first. Things like, faith is believing for kites to fly when there's no wind in sight. <laughs> faith is, picture it done. Those are great definitions. That's a great definition of faith, picture it done. But then I started seeing that he was seeing glimpses of heaven and things like that, and it just kept coming and coming. One night he wakes me up in the middle of the night, and he says, uh, I say say, but he types, um, that God wants to show me about the triune God. Because he's not Elma. verbal yet. Right. right. He, he still is not to this day. And so I'm like, okay, I wasn't really thinking about the Trinity, but go for it. And this is what he types. In the Trinity, in the, Trinity the, the Father is the manager. The Son is the, the, lover, son is the lover of operations. operations. Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit is, the is the worker. So it's the three in one getting things done. He, he is, is Papa. Papa. He, he is, is healer. healer. He, he is, is helper. helper. The world was created by only three functions that went like this. Father, Father thought, thought it. it. Son, son loved, loved it. it. Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit carried, carried out the plan. plan. That is, that how, is the how the Trinity, Trinity works, works, Mom. So man must voice, Father, what do you think? Jesus, what do you love? Holy Spirit, what should we do about it? That's our mission. You know, someone could take that and preach a whole sermon off of that. Um, now, and I understand he, he ha has a guardian angel, he sees angels. Uh, tell me about uh, the angel that came to reveal his purpose. Yeah, well, he, he, the way he explains it is that not only can he hear and see in the spirit and sometimes have visions, but also at night it's like he gets taken up in his spirit and his mind into heaven and actually is educated on some things. So he's in this school type setting in heaven and uh, he's, he's at this desk and this angel named Nathan points to him. And this angel he says is a tall angel about nine foot tall and they pointed to him and said, boy of God's fire, is your name Josiah? You have pages to fill, and in this day, you will help light God's fire in his people again. I'll tell you what really intrigues me. Her son prophesies, but really, I mean really prophesies. Tell me about the lady at the mall. Oh, wow. Well, this is one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had. Um, I took Josiah to uh, the IMAX theater at the zoo. And uh, after we got done with that, I said, OK, where do you want to go now? And he bring, I bring out the iPad, get him situated. And he, he types that, take me to the Mall of America, and God will have a surprise for you there. Okay. I was like, okay, I don't know what that's going to be, but let's go to the Mall of America. Uh, so we are walking around the mall, and he points to my purse to get the iPad out. And says, what's up, Josiah? And uh, he, he starts typing that I'm going to have to talk to a nice girl who is uh, staring glances his way. And I'm like, who are you talking about? I don't see anybody around. And I was like, who are you talking about? He goes on to type this while we're just sitting on the bench. 
Love is love. Tell her that. Take her breath away. Tell her that love is born out of choosing God, not Wicca, which is witchcraft. Hope is love, not more daddy issues. Pick a spiritual daddy. It is God. Choose him because you need me, he says. And I'm just like sweating because I'm going, I'm going to have to tell this to somebody. (laughs) Are you serious? And and yet I can't figure out who it even is. I start looking around. I look down the hall and there I see a girl with a a black cape on. I'm like, oh, that must be the witch. What happens is she and and, uh, some of her 20 something friends start walking in front of our bench. I know it's now or never. So I jump up and I'm like, excuse Excuse me. me. (laughs) And I'm like, are you you spiritually spiritually inclined? inclined? (laughs) And she says, yeah, I guess. And um, (laughs) I I explained to her about Josiah and stuff. I said, I think I have a word for you. Can I give it to you? And so I read this to her and I say, does that mean anything to you? And she says, no, not really. really. My heart just sunk. You know, we're missing it. The girl next to her in a really sunny yellow tank top says, "Uh, that's not her takes her tank top and goes that's like this, her, revealing a five me. point a star tattoo. She says, that's me. not her, but that's me. I'm in Wicca yeah, and I've I'm been told daddy I daddy have daddy, daddy, daddy issues. And I just got so hot as you were saying that. I said to her, do you realize that God, like the God of the Bible, intersected time and space in the biggest mall of America to somehow make me and my autistic son talk to you? Are you a little freaked out by this? And she said, well, uh, I haven't even gone to church since I was like in ninth grade. I was Lutheran. (laughs) Josiah is taken up to heaven every night and studies there and meets people in heaven and sees things in heaven. Anyone interested in knowing what he sees? Me too. Be right back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural! I've felt it before. I've heard it. I've seen it. A glimpse into a realm more real than we could ever know. Can you feel it? The presence of the one who created you. Can you hear it? Deep is crying out to deep. Can you see it? A new world is becoming unveiled. The secrets of the spirit are waiting for you to discover. Sign up now for the free five-part mini course. We now return to It's Supernatural. Okay, Uh, he goes to heaven. He sees relatives he's never met. Tell me one. Yes, so uh, Auntie is uh, the, the, the first person that he had ever commented on. He would know nothing about her. He would know nothing her. about her. And he wrote, Auntie dances now, you know. Um, the idea that Auntie was dancing when she was such a reserved person was just beautiful. And there have been many family members that, that he has commented on, and my father is one of them, um, and things about mansions and things about uh, all sorts of places and spaces in heaven that are just astounding. Uh, do, does Josiah believe he is going to be healed? Yes, and, and the Lord has told him many things about healing. You made a decision early on to not cope, but hope. Yes. There are people watching us right now. Maybe they don't have a a child that's autistic, but you're just coping. You're you're just barely getting by. I want you to extend a rope of hope. I love that phrase, a rope of hope to them. Would you do that now? Well, Romans 15, 13 says, the God of hope will give you peace and joy in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. There is no coping in heaven's language. It is only hope. And even Abraham, it said, in the worst situations against hope, he hoped. (laughs) 
And you may not have the situation that I have. You might have a completely different situation. But the God of hope is extending this rope. In fact, hope in Hebrew means a cord, a rope. Grab onto that rope. And I just pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, as you grab onto that rope, that you will follow that rope and you will find the most amazing relationship with God the Father, with God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in intimacy. And in that hope, you will find faith like you have never known before, and it will move mountains. What I hear you saying is start expecting again. Start believing again. Don't look back. Press on. We're coming into a new time on planet Earth, and God has called you to know Him. If you'll believe that and ask Jesus to live inside of you, I tell you the best part of your life is ahead of you.